What's up, guys? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to give you guys a quick update on Tesla Spy and the broader markets. Let me first say that I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire community as a whole. Anyways, the question is what's happening with the market thus far. The market saw a little bit of a dip in the morning only to get bought back up. And that was what I was warning everyone about, about how the market was being dictated by buyers. And as you guys can see, SPY is getting bought up very, very nicely. So is NVIDIA. So are the majority of stocks out there. QQQ is doing a great job. So is NQES. And the list goes on. But some stocks like Tesla are a little bit lackluster, unfortunately. Tesla is not really up that great. It's only down about 1.5%. Uh, it's kind of range bound right now. So the question is, why is this happening? What's going to affect this? So I want to talk about that first. Uh, but just know that when it comes to news and such, we had some negative news that came out, at least for, I would say, the markets. Not saying that this means the market has to dip more or anything like that, but this may be part of why we saw a little bit of a dip. Uh, the U.S. is rushing its firepower to the Middle East amidst everything that's going on involving Israel. And there are very, very big threats of retaliation today. A very, very big attack could be coming this week, according to reports. So I want everyone to be very careful about this. Uh, I want to just give you guys a heads up about this. This is still going on. So what's happening is the threats are really high for the entire week between now and the 16th of August. And uh, if that were to happen, okay, I'm not saying this is happening right now, but if it did happen, if there is a big attack that happens, we're going to be looking for a big dip temporarily in the markets. Just a temporary move to the downside. Uh, not saying it's going to last forever, but the market's going to have a very negative reaction in the very beginning. Uh, so just be mindful in case you guys see a big dip in the markets, a huge one very fast. It might have something to do with this. So just be careful. This is another big catalyst, at least for us. And then there's also this news involving former President Trump and Elon Musk. So Elon Musk is going to be interviewing former President Donald Trump with no limits on subject matter. Uh, I think this is very important uh, because of the fact that it's going to give us more insights about Musk's views. Uh, I think that Tesla's a little bit apprehensive about this is dipping a bit because one thing that's worth mentioning is that um, I don't think that this alone would be like bearish or bullish for Tesla, but there's a little bit of uncertainty about Musk's politics. And one thing worth mentioning about former President Trump is that if he were to win, this will have a big effect on subsidies, and this may have a little bit of a negative reaction for Tesla, but that's just one factor that's negative. There's also going to be lots of positive factors, such as the effect on the tax code and a bunch of different things. So I think it's going to go both ways, but there will be some negative uh, things, at least for uh, you know the EV sector. That is something that's worth mentioning, uh, especially because of comments by former President Trump about the auto industry and trying to bring back you know gas power and things like that. So I'm just trying to say that, look, I'm not trying to get political here when I say this, but uh, knowing how politics gets in the way of things, that is the part of the reason why Tesla could be dipping a little bit right before this interview. Uh, and, and then whether or not we continue to dip depends on what is said. So if Elon Musk and you know former President Trump say some things that are very positive for the EV markets, the market likes what they're saying, you know, the EV sector could actually bounce. But if they say something that's like not too great, um, you know, the market could also see a very, very negative reaction. So it all depends on what Elon Musk and former President Trump say. I'm not going to put words, words in their mouth. Uh, if Musk, you know, says something about how, you know, former President Trump, his policies could affect Tesla negatively for the short term, just hypothetically, you know, that could cause a big dip in the, you know, Tesla stock, maybe even the markets. If the opposite happens to the EV market and, you know, former President Trump is optimistic and says that he's going to help, you know, the sector, and then Elon Musk is optimistic too. We could even see a big bounce tomorrow. So it all depends on the interview. I'll probably have to just wait and see what they say. Uh, and then we'll see how it goes. But for the time being, it looks like Tesla's a little bit uncertain about the whole interview. And it's a little bit lackluster compared to the markets. That's no surprise considering that there's uncertainty right now. So look at 195 as our critical supports. Resistance is at 200. We held these ranges. I was hoping we would consolidate, maybe try to push a little bit with the market. Because if you look at SPY, Right? We dipped only to get bought back up and start pushing. We look at the QQQ, we dipped only to start pushing. We look at Apple, we dipped only to start pushing as well. We actually got a nice pump on Apple. So a lot of stocks are pumping very nicely. We're seeing buyers defending, but Tesla of all things is a little bit lackluster and that, you know, it is what it is with all this news that's coming out. So from this point on, just watch 195 as a critical level. 
If Tesla were to lose that, there's going to be a bigger dip coming towards 192. If we hold this support, look at resistance around 200, 200.45 hour, 4 hour 20 EMA. Right now, it's range bound. It's been going back and forth and back and forth. So there's not really much going on with Tesla. It's a little bit lackluster, but I just want to say that I, I don't really see much going on with it. It's just completely stuck for now. So we'll just have to give this some time just to see how things end up developing. But just keep that in the back of your guys' minds. That's what Tesla's doing. Just completely range bound, getting bought up at 195 and kind of rejecting off 200. So be patient with this. If you look at SPY, we dipped. People started panicking, but I said, hey, based off my technicals, the market was favoring upside. That's what I told you guys in my morning video. We got this dip only to get bought back up. So the buyers came back and they defended very, very nicely. So it just goes to show that I was correct. The buyers, they came back. They're, they're the ones who are, they, they basically have an edge right now. So despite the edge they have, just know that 535 is going to be a key resistance. If we break that, we're looking at 538. Otherwise, SPY is going to continue to fight around this 535 area. The buyers are present. The market's trying to uptrend. And you guys can see how this is developing, at least thus far. For NVIDIA, we're also getting bought back up. Watch this 110 area. If we break and hold above this, I'll be looking for 112. We look bullish on NVIDIA. Bitcoin is trying to balance. We called out a balance on Bitcoin. So far, we're looking at 60,000 resistance. If we break that, there's going to be a bigger push. We're looking pretty good thus far. ES is looking pretty good. Look at this resistance all the way up here around this uh, 5,400 area. We're doing a good job at holding up. SPX is also trying to get bought back up. We're going to be looking for this gap resistance at 5380. Eventually, that gap filled the 5400s. So we look pretty good on the charts. QQQ is getting bought back up. I called out 454 in my morning video. We're up 0.6%. We're getting closer to it. Watch 454. If that breaks, we're going up to 457. And look at our critical support at 450, then 447.5. This chart looks more bullish nonetheless, so for 454 looks more probable. For Apple, we look more bullish. We're going to be looking for that gap fill towards 219. I called this out from the beginning, and we're doing a good job. If we lose 215, we turn back down, but this is favoring upside. If you look at Supermicro, I called a bounce on Supermicro in my previous video for a test of at least 540. We're actually doing a good job. We're currently at 560, so we're doing a good job. Might try to push higher. The resistance to watch for is now going to be 580. We'll see if we try to push Good job from Supermicro. It was due for a bounce. The Russell is a little bit lackluster. Unfortunately, we're just shuffling. Let's look at 205 as our support. Watch resistance at 206.6 and also at 208. In my personal opinion, I think it's just shuffling between 205 and 208, so it's not really doing much. Coinbase is testing resistance around 195 and key support around 190. We may shuffle a bit and then try to push if we break past 195. Amazon's looking a little bit more bullish. Uh, we're, as long as we hold above 167, I think we favor 170. Uh, to be tested so it's looking a little bit more bullish We're, we also have resistance at 168 if that breaks we'll continue to push but we do favor upside on meta i said we might dip a little bit and we'll see if we bounce off 512 so far we're holding key support and kind of within a range but as, as long as we hold above 512 we do favor upside for 520 plus if we lose 512 we're going to be dipping back down we've dipped a little bit only to get bought back up again so we're just kind of consolidating and same thing with microsoft I, I was a little off on Microsoft. I thought we would push up towards 408 and 410. Instead, we had 408, which I was right about, but then we didn't continue to go. We got a rejection, and now we're barely at 405. So if we lose this 405 support close below that, we turn bearish. We might see a little dip. If we hold that, we could rebound. So I'll be watching to see if that ends up being the case. For Google, we're also consolidating right now, going back and forth and back and forth. Look at 166 as our resistance. If we hold above that, we could try to fill this gap for 168. And if we end up losing 164, we'll be dipping. We're holding up decently, so we'll just have to give this a little bit more time. I was also right about the VIX dipping to fill this gap. That's what we're doing thus far. We're almost completely done with filling the gap below. But we'll see if the VIX gets a bounce later if the market gets a rejection. We're just waiting for that. Uh, we're not ready to reject yet. And right now, the charts are favoring upside for SPY and the others. Just wanted to call that out. Tesla is trying to get bought back up, but we haven't been able to crack 200. If we manage to crack 200.4, yes, Tesla will push more. Otherwise, it's just range bound between 195 and 200, which is kind of boring for now. Uh, that's just what's happening for now. I think that we're just going to consolidate. And we're just waiting for this big interview between Donald Trump and Elon Musk. We'll see what Musk has to say to uh, former President Trump, uh, what the big views are, and we'll see what ends up being said, because whatever is said will have a big effect on Tesla. So make sure you guys are ready for this. And then the last catalyst would be 
what's happening overall over here with the Middle East situation. We'll see, guys. I mean, I, I really just hate to hear news like this. I, I just don't want there to be any violence. We all just want peace. So let's hope for the best, and we'll see how things go. But just know the market is looking more bullish. Spy is going to fight for 535 to try to break that. And we're seeing Tesla also attempted to follow the trend. Uh, but Tesla is a little lackluster. We haven't been able to crack this resistance. So that's why we're just range bound. All right. So if Tesla were to hypothetically break this 200 air watch 202 uh, as well, not to mention 205, but we're still uh, coming just short. So just give Tesla the time it needs. And with that being said, I just want to thank you all so much for listening. Have a great day, guys. I'll see you guys in a few hours. Peace out.